Mr. Simone here from Hamden Middle School. Um, we also have a guest appearance. There's Mr. Walton. Say hi. Um, Hello. For, for today's video, we're going to be able to calculate the slope or rate of change from a table of values. That's great. This should be fun. It is. So what we have here is a table of values. Let me step to the side. So we have our x values and we have our y values. And what you can try to do is look for a little pattern. Yeah. Right? We know that slope also is known as the, the letter M is your change in Y over change in X. And ideally when we talk about change, we're looking for that specific pattern. So Mr. Wong, yeah. do you notice a pattern in our in our Y values? I think I might notice a pattern. So from here to here, looks like it's plus two. And from here to here, plus two. So for my change in Y, it's going plus two every time. Ah, so we can say because of this pattern, this specific change, that is our change in y, that's 2. At the same time, if you look at the x's, our x values were actually increasing by plus 3. So each time, we notice that from 0 to 3 is 3, um, from 3 to 6 we're adding by 3, and we continue that pattern all the way through. Now when doing this, you want to make sure that you understand that when we're looking at slope, we're not maybe looking at one specific point, we're actually looking at the actual change. So this idea of 2 and 3, we know that this is going to be 2 thirds for our slope. Now, Mr. Walton, is this a positive or a negative? Well, it looks to me this would be a positive slope. That's correct. It is positive. Well done. So if we were to graph any of these points on a line, uh, on, on a graph, our line would be in a positive direction, so going upward. All right, let's look at another example. This is awesome. All right, next one. Next one. Another one. Mm. Oh, wow. Mr. Wallen, what's slope again? Slope is m, right? Okay. And that's our change in y over our change in x. Looks pretty good. Looks great. Looks wonderful. Now, is there a formula you could use to find a slope too? There is a formula. You could do y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now you said sub. Ooh. What does that mean? Sub is used for naming purposes. So the little, these little values are specific to the points we choose. So let's say, Mr. Walton, you choose two specific points. I'm going to choose these two points. All right. Uh, which one would you like to be your first one? Um, I like to go with the bigger number. So I'm going to go with 7 as my y is my first one. Okay, so your first coordinate point, your 2, 7, is going to be your x sub 1 and y sub 1 because it's the first point you chose. Oh, it's always like a label. It is like a label. Oh, exactly. so it's not an exponent. It's not an exponent. Okay. Subscripts are labeled. So the other point you chose is 4, 6, would be our x sub 2 or y sub 2. So it's my second coordinate. It is your second coordinate point. It's all making sense. All right. So, Mr. Wong, you want to... I'm going to try to work this out. All right, go ahead. I'm going to step across the stream. <laughs> okay, so let me see. My y2 is my 6 minus my y1 is my 7. And I got to put my fraction bar there, right? x2 is 4. x1 is 2. Now I'm going to solve it from there. All right. Integers are important. So 6 minus 7, that's going to give me a... Negative 1. And 4 minus 2 gives me 2. Mr. Wall, what does this uh, fraction bar mean in math? That means to divide. It it's does division. mean to divide. It also represents this idea of uh, the change in y over change in x, which is a ratio. And we can represent a ratio in fraction form. Now, could I have done this maybe quicker instead of using those two points? What could I have done? I think you could have. Could Remember have. our last problem where we found our change in y? So, so between there was how much? Minus one. Minus one. And we have a minus one there. And change for our x's are? Plus two. Plus two. We have a positive two there. So again, at any time you want, sometimes the table of values, you can identify the pattern relatively quickly because the, the pattern is continuous throughout. But sometimes you may have to use a formula, um, or you can actually just highlight two specific points. You ready for another one? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's try it out. Okay. All right, this time I'm going to try and trick you. You're a tricky guy, Mr. Simone. Oh, boy. All right, so 
I'm going to rewrite that m is our change in y over change in x. We'll keep that consistent. That is our slope. And this is looking kind of funny over here. Why? I don't see any set pattern. No, there is no set it's pattern. A little frustrating. Huh? Well, do the first few. Let's see. Let's see. How about you do the ones on the y's and I'll do the ones on the x's. All right. So here, that looks like that's um, hmm, that's the change. That's ten. It is ten. It's changing ten. All Mine's right. going to be positive two. All right. Now I'm going from here to here. That's a change in five. This one changes by one. It's not. It's not constant. No. What's going on? Now this is a change in ten. Mine's going to be two. And another change in five. And this is a change in one. So I don't like this one. No, I mean, there is kind of a pattern though, right? Yeah, a little bit. Sort of. Yeah, 10, 5, 10, 5. But it didn't really help me find the slope. Or does it? Mm. All right, we just look at the first two values, the 10 and the 2. If we were just to use these ones as our change in y and our change in x, we could say that this is going to be 10, 10 over, over 2. 2. Huh. I think I can simplify that 10 over 2. To what? I'm looking at my pattern here. I've got a 5 and a 1. So I could divide those both by 2. OK. Which would give you 5 over 1. Are these still the same answer? They are. OK. But which one would be like more correct? 5 over 1. Always got to simplify that slope. Always got to simplify that slope. And again, if you wanted to, instead of looking at all of the points, we could highlight just two specific points like we did before to find that the slope will simplify to 5 over 1. Um, so good, let's try, let's try another one of these. Yeah. All right. This is fun. Okay, let's do another one. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. All right. Hmm. I'm looking at this one. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe for this one, instead of, we, we, we know that they're all gonna be linear because we're talking about slope. So maybe instead of going through like that, that pattern idea, maybe we pick out two points for this one and run through that. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Do you want to use maybe like the Simone method for solving for slope? I love Simone methods. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I want to have you pick out two points. All right. All right. You know, I'm going to go with 0, 9. Oh, I like that. Like right. 0, 9. 0, 9. And I'm going to go with 9, 6. All right. Yeah. All right. So again, we have our two points. We can say this is change in y over change in x. Again, that is our slope. Simone method. Ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Let's actually look at the change in y. How do I get from 9 to 6? Hmm. That would be a minus 3. That's right. Minus 3. How do I get from 0 to 9? That would be a plus 9. That is plus 9. And if you notice, we went from the y's to a y, and then from an x to an x. So realistically, my slope, I could write this as negative 3 over 9. That's a pretty cool method. Exactly. And I like the bar there. Yeah, the bar is kind of like the fraction bar mm, like the that ratio. separates. Yeah, it separates our ratio. Is that the final answer? I'm going to guess that you can simplify that, Mr. Simone. All right, why don't you go ahead? They look like they both might be divisible by 3. Okay. So I'm going to divide those both by 3. Simplify my fraction. So my slope now is negative. One third. One now, third. a couple of great things he's done here is because we've divided by 3 on the top and divided by 3 on the bottom, many times you think we're actually just dividing by a whole number 3, but we're not. We're actually just dividing by 1. So that's why these two um, simplify to that value, because we are, in fact, just dividing by 1 yeah. um, with 3 over 3. What else did you do here? I noticed something different with this compared to that. Yeah, you know, I, the negative is very interesting, because I have negative 1 here. Remember, that's a fraction bar, right? So if I do negative 1 divided by 3... I still get a negative number, right? Because our positive times a negative equals a negative. Now with the fraction, so that means the negative you can put anywhere. I can put it in the middle, I can put it on top if I wanted to. Put it on the bottom. Mm. So they're all the same answer. I like it. Or I like it. All right, now to the next one. Awesome. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's look at. Ooh. Whoa! What happened here? What do you notice? A lot of fives right there on the there, Y. There are a lot of fives on the Y. All right, so going back, I always reinforce this. That slope is that change in Y over change in X. Oh, that's okay. We got time. We got time. What's the change in Y? Change in Y, it's zero. It's just zero. Nothing's happening. Does it matter what happens to X? Nope. 
No, unless it was also zero, because then it'd be something kind of funny. Mm. But for this one, we're going to notice that the pattern looks like we're adding by one. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because zero divided by anything is zero. Okay, so our slope is just going to be zero. That's an easy one. Interesting. Um, Mr. Walton. Yeah. When looking at a graph, what does the slope of zero look like for our line? Well, we have a nice horizontal line. Perfect. For the horizon. Ooh, I like it. Last one for today we're going to look at is this one. Oh, boy. What happens if all of our x's happen, happen to be the same value? Oh, change in y, change in x. So, again, so it's all a zero change. So that zero is going to go on the bottom. And then these changes are going up by one, right? Plus one. So we, now we have that. But I don't know. The world doesn't like the zero on the bottom. No. What happens if we use a calculator and we try to figure out what 1 divided by 0 is? We're going to get a funky error. Get a funky error. Yep. So what does that mean about our slope? It means our slope is undefined. There you go. There's no definition for it. You know? All the smart people in the math world, they can't figure out why that doesn't work. So therefore, it's no definition undefined. All right. Did I spell that correctly? Yes, you did. All right. So we, uh, that's our video. Hope this helps you. Again, this is how to find the slope or rate of change from a table of values. Do your best. Watch the video. Good luck. Have fun. Thanks. High five. High five, man.